Gang. Welcome back, everybody, to Jelly Mats Concepts. Today, we're going to be looking at um, question seven, which is a statistics question. Um, probability, May 2014, people. That's what we have here. All right, let's go at it. So this one reads as follows. All right. So it says, um, there, so we could zoom it up to have a look. It says, um, and it reads as follows. It says, it says there are 60, let me, let me just underline, there are 60 students in a sixth form um, of a certain school. Mathematics is studied by 27 students, biology by 20, and there are 22 students study neither, all right? 22 students study neither, mathematics nor biology. If a student is selected at random, what is the probability that the student is studying both mathematics and biology? All right, all right. So in order to do a question like this, what we wanna do is just to drop a Venn diagram that will be dealing with the idea. So a Venn diagram is simply just having, having, having our box here, and we're gonna be putting two sets in our box, okay? All right, so we're gonna deal with a Venn diagram, a little box, and then I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use a blue marker for mathematics, right? Calling that M, then I'm going to be using um, a green marker for O for the biology. I'm going to call that B. Um, definitely, the question told us that there are there is 22 persons that are not studying any of those subjects. So we want to put them on the outside, all right? And we know that the universal set it consists of 60. So we're told a total of 60 students. Um, Definitely, they're asking us about the students that studied both. Um, we didn't get that. So what we want to do is just that we want to label that concept with a variable. We're going to call that X, right? So X would be the number of students who study both. And it is actually representing this area here. So you could look at it. I'm coloring this yellow. That's the area where we have students who are doing mathematics as well as they're doing um, biology. All right, let's continue. Um, to find out though this section here over this side, I could I could just color it a little bit. All right, this section over here. To find out this section here though, we're gonna have to make a move, right? Because this section in the green would be those students who are actually mathematics only. All right, so these these students here, they're mathematics only, and definitely um, since since we realize that there are 27 students for mathematics, then we're gonna have 27, and then we're gonna have to take that X out of it. So 27 minus X. Over this section though, I wanna color this. I wanna, I wanna make this something. I wanna put this color here. Over this section is biology only, all right? So students in this section, they only study biology, all right? They only study biology. All right, so good. So there you're seeing that. These students only study biology. And the thing is, we were told that there are 20 students who study biology. Therefore, in this section, it's gonna be 20 minus X, right? So here it is, we have one, two, three, four sections that we're dealing with. And this would have collected the data fully that, that was given above. Now let's go on to find the probability for three marks here for students who um, both who studied both mathematics and um, biology. That is making an effort to find a value for X first because X is that. So what we're gonna do is to ensure that we, we say 27 minus X plus um, X plus 20 minus X plus 22. And this should add up to give us 60, which would have represented everybody in that um that class. Now let's look 
on what we have here. What we want to do is to make sure that we're getting this correctly. Now we're going to put this together. This is X. This is, this is minus X. This is positive X. This is minus X. Definitely when these combine, we'll notice that we would end up with a negative X right here. And if we should add 27 plus 20, that's 49 plus 20, we'll end up with 69, and this is equal to 60. So we collected the like term, simplify, and then we're gonna solve for X. Um, ordinarily, so we'll subtract 69 from both sides, 69 from both sides. So negative X is equal to negative nine. All right, not bad. Negative X is equal to negative nine. So we're going. Now at this time, what we wanna do is to divide both sides by negative one or multiply throughout by negative one, whichever way you feel x is equal to nine now x is equal to nine is not the answer that we're looking for right um it's gonna help us to find the answer so i agree that nine is 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 is, is represents those students um that's so the mathematics and biology but pay attention to the question itself the question really never asks us to find that the question says what is the probability that a student selected at random would have studied that. So what we're gonna have to do now is to use that information to go forward. What do I mean? Nine would be correct, but nine out of 60. And we could break this down if we want, dividing through it by three, we would have three into the nine, three, three into the 60, 20. So three out of 20 is the probability. All right, or a student selected at random that would have studied both mathematics and biology. All right, now let's go to the next question. So the next question says um, that a student selected at random studies biology only. Biology only, um, so definitely we're referring to, 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 to 20. So biology only, let me just put it right here. Biology only is simply this error, 20 minus X. But we found out that X is nine. So it's 20 minus nine, which is equal to 11. Now we're, we're talking about probability. So we can't just write 11, like 11 is the answer. 11 is gonna help us to find that probability. So we agree that it's 11 students, but probability wise, it's gonna be 11 over 60. Oh, let me fix that. 11 over 60 as a probability. And that's the answer for those, all right? All right, very good. Let's now jump to the other question. So there are really two ordinary, um, two ordinary six-side dice are thrown together. The, the random variable S represents, okay, represents the sum of the scores of their faces landing upwards, okay? Copy and complete the, the sample space diagram. Okay, I think I understand what's going on here. So two dice was thrown, all right? And what they're doing, they're adding up the, the faces that we're looking at, the numbers on the faces that we're looking at. Okay, so we wanna complete the sample space chart. Um, so this is like saying, um, a S, a, a one with a one will give us a two, a one with a two would give us a three, uh, one with a three will give us a four. And then you're going to see a pattern. This is five. This is six. This is seven. And a two with a one, a two with a one will give us a three. A two with a two will give us a four. And then you're going to see the pattern going up. This is five. This is six. This is seven. It's already there. This is eight. But definitely I'm seeing a pattern too. So I, I, I don't need to be adding anymore because I am actually working with a pattern eight, nine. This is 10. This is nine, this is eight, this is seven, this is six, this is five, this is six, this is seven, eight is there, this is nine, this is 10, this is 11, then we have a 12, then we have 11, then 10, then nine, then eight, and then seven. Um, because definitely in completing the sample space, um, there is a pattern that came out. And the moment the pattern comes out, then we could just go ahead and quickly finish off this. So this is the sample space that we're dealing with. And not only that, we're talking about, um, if we should look at the rows and the columns, I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. So that means there's a sample space of 36. So my total sample space here, my total sample space would have been 36, all right? 36. Now let's see what the questions that they're asking now, questions. It says, find the probability. So we're looking at A here. 
find the probability that um, the sum is greater than nine. So if it's gonna be greater than nine, it's gonna be 10, 11, and 12. So let's highlight those, right? So greater than nine, greater than nine, greater than nine would have been 10, 10 here, 10 there, 11 here, 12 there, 11 there. So it's about uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. We're getting six scores could be greater than nine based on what we have. So we're talking about representing that six over the total sample space, which is 36. And in simplification, six into itself, one times six into 36, six. So we're talking about one six. And let's go for the other question. Uh, we want to know the probability that the sum is less than or equal to four. So four is going to be included in this, less than or equal to four. So we're talking about having um, talking about having four in the mix, four in the mix, four in the mix, three, two. All right, so these are the, the, the scores that we have. It's a six again, one, two, three, four, five, six again. So um, this is six out of 36. All right, we're talking about um, the sum to be four, the sum should be three, the sum should be two. So for this one, it is still six out of 36. And when we work this down, we get one six, all right? So definitely, um, thank you for watching. Um, this is seven uh, A and B question, 14, question um, seven of AdMath 2014. Thank you for watching Delhi Maths Concept. Please subscribe. Bye-bye.